aspiration pneumonia is what we will discuss in this video. And uh, aspiration pneumonia can occur uh, quite often in following conditions that are known as risk factors. The first risk factor is any patient that has any level of impaired cognition. And examples of this are patients with dementia, uh, patients who are mentally retarded, or patients that are undergoing some sort of uh, anesthesia because of some uh, operation, surgery. Another risk factor is any uh, patient that has any condition of impaired swallowing, such as dysphagia, uh, which is uh, commonly seen after a stroke. That can lead to aspiration pneumonia. Another risk factor is chronic GERD or uh, chronic vomiting. Person can aspirate the gastric contents. And there's some devices that can uh, be considered risk factors of developing aspiration pneumonia. The first is GI devices such as nasogastric tubes that are placed. So they actually can be a risk factor, believe it or not. And uh, respiratory devices such as an endotracheal tube. So this is uh, some of the scenarios that you'll see in clinical vignettes that the patient has one or, or more of these uh, risk factors. So what exactly is happening? What is the pathophysiology involved? Well, I'll break it down into two categories. The first is pneumonitis, which is essentially inflammation of the lung. And then the other one, of course, is pneumonia, which is um, an actual infection. And then I'll talk about uh, what's happening. Well, some substance has been aspirated. And what that means is instead of going down the esophagus into the stomach, it's gone down the trachea into the lungs. And it's toxic to the lungs. So what type of substance? Well, for pneumonitis, the most common is gastric contents, in particular gastric acid. And that can happen, of course, in GERD, and this can cause uh, inflammation. Now, pneumonia, which is the main issue that we wanted to discuss, can happen because of aspiration of food or oral secretions. Now, the important part about this is that this can contain the toxic organisms, and those are oral anaerobes. Oral anaerobes, also gram-negative, gram-negative organisms. So, oral anaerobes and gram-negative uh, organisms are responsible for causing pneumonia when you aspirate uh, food or oral secretions. So well, how will a patient present? Symptoms of pneumonia are actually very nonspecific. Uh, difficulty breathing, fever, uh, a cough, uh, signs um, that you pick up on physical exams such as abnormal lung sounds such as crackles, ronchi, and some other uh, signs that you may pick up on a physical exam, such as uh, poor, poor oral hygiene. That's also something you can detect when you're examining the patient. So these are some of the signs and symptoms of pneumonia. Diagnosis by far, the, the most important uh, initial diagnostic test is a chest x-ray. And really what you're checking for is any infiltrate or also sometimes in severe cases there can be an abscess. And the treatment, the treatment of uh, aspiration pneumonia involves an antibiotic that will cover the pathogens that are involved. And the most common one is clindamycin antibiotic. And it has great activity toward the agents 
that cause aspiration ammonia. And those are oral anaerobes and gram-negative organisms. Now there's other antibiotics also, but this is by far the most common um, seen on clinical vignettes. And if necessary, surgical drainage of the abscess, if there is one. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about prevention. Prevention is a very important uh, uh, point in aspiration pneumonia because it can be recurrent. It can occur several times, especially patients that are in nursing homes. So the, fir the first thing you want to discuss uh, if there's a possibility of avoiding any oral feedings, and that can be done with a special diet, special diet of uh, thickened liquids, and all medications can be crushed or given as oral because uh, a lot of medications are not just pill forms but there's also liquid forms. Another important thing especially for patients that are chronically uh, bed bound or bedridden is elevate the head of the bed. This has been proven. Uh, elevating the head of the bed to greater than 30 degrees has been proven to decrease uh, the risk of aspiration pneumonia. One thing I wanted to mention is a lot of these patients have stomach tubes, either a G-tube in the gastric uh, area or a J-tube into the jejunum. And this is used, these tubes are used uh, for severe dysphagia, meaning patients who are unable to swallow. You give the food directly through the tubes into the stomach or jejunum, small intestine. But this does not decrease the risk of aspiration pneumonia. So I just wanted to point that out. Yes, they are used for patients who have uh, severe difficulty swallowing, dysphagia, but uh, unfortunately it still causes uh, or still can uh, d uh, result in a patient developing aspiration pneumonia. So let's take a look at a few clinical vignettes. 86 year old man with severe Alzheimer's disease is scheduled to undergo a left carotid endarterectomy. The patient is on the medical service recovering from a fall sustained during a syncopal episode. His past medical history is significant for pharyngeal dysmotility and reflux disease. Patient is moderately demented and is fed soft solids and thick liquids with the help of an aid. And speaking with the anesthesia team, you learned that the patient cannot have the procedure done under a cervical plexus block due to his dementia, and he will therefore require general anesthetic. In discussing the risks of the procedure with the patient's daughter, a serious post-op complication that this patient is especially high risk for is, well, this has all the classic, he's got dementia, He's got reflux disease. He's got difficulty swallowing. That's why he's being fed uh, a special diet. And then he's going to go under anesthesia. All this is risk factors for developing aspiration pneumonia or aspiration pneumonitis. Next question. 80-year-old male is admitted to your inpatient medical service with presumed aspiration pneumonia. He has medical history significant for aspiration pneumonias and as Alzheimer's disease. He has a history of alcohol abuse and in the past and currently is a nursing home resident. He has an NG tube in place which has been used for tube feeds. Temperature is 100, blood pressure is 122, heart rate is 98, respiratory rate is 23, and O2 saturation is 97%. He has decreased breath sounds in the right lower lung field and his cardiac exam is unremarkable. Chest x-ray shows a right lower lobe consolidation consistent with pneumonia. While reviewing his medical records, you notice that this patient has been admitted for aspiration four times over the past 12 months. The intervention that could be instituted to reduce his risk of aspiration pneumonia in the future is, well, a lot of these may seem like proper mechanisms, but none of them reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia. They're, you know, NG tubes or G tubes, as described here, or J tube, um, are given for people who have very difficulty swallowing, 
So you have to give the food or nutrition directly into the stomach or small intestine, but they do not, interestingly, reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia. The only one on the list that has been proven to reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia is elevating the head of bed, most likely greater than 30 degrees. And finally, previously healthy 31-year-old woman comes to your office complaining of one-day history of cough and fever. She reports that she was celebrating a job promotion three days ago and drank a bit of alcohol at a local bar. She had two episodes of vomiting that evening. She takes no regular meds and has only been using acetaminophen for fever suppression. Temperature is 100.8. Lungs have decreased breath sounds in the left base and right upper lobe. She has a cough that is productive of foul-smelling sputum. The remainder of her exam is unremarkable. Most appropriate management is. Uh, Foul-smelling sputum uh, kind of goes hand-in-hand hand, uh, with aspiration pneumonia. She's young, but she did vomit, and now she's developed cough and fever, and she's got some decreased breath sounds, most likely an aspiration pneumonia. And you want to give an antibiotic that will cover the anaerobes and the gram-negative uh, organisms that are most likely the uh, pathogens that are causing this uh, uh, infection. And that most commonly is clindamycin antibiotic. And of the choices, that would be choice A.